draw near to you, but you clothe yourself with frail humanity. You did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let me hear your voice calling. Thank you for this time that God has given to us. And today also, I would like to continue, but we'll continue from the book of First John chapter 2. So the book of First John chapter 2, verses 1, says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that to sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And it is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours, ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So, I've read the book of 1 John, chapter 2, starting from verses 1 up to verses 2. As you know that in the book of 1 John, chapter 1, we learn about the purpose, we learn about the core, and also we could talk about the conclusion. So as we had already made that conclusion of the book of 1 John chapter 1, I would like us also to continue to chapter 2. Chapter 2 now explains to us, after receiving chapter 1, how should we continue our spiritual life? How should we live our spiritual life? So in this chapter 2, explain to us clearly after receiving salvation. So, which means that chapter 1 is talking about receiving salvation. How people should be receiving salvation. There's no way how we can receive salvation without verses 9, chapter 1, verses 9. First John chapter 1, verses 9. We must pass through the book of First John chapter 1, verses 9, which is talking about the repentance. But yes, that verse 9, it is not the way of salvation. It is only leading us to receive salvation. But where do we get a salvation exactly? Salvation, it is in verse 7, where there is the blood of Jesus Christ. But now this verse 9 is only leading us to the repentance, so that we can come to the repentance, so that we can reach the repentance, so that we can be in the position where God can work in our life. So the repentance is very, very important in our life. Repentance, it is turning. Repentance, it is coming to the realization. Then after you have come to the realization, after you realize that you are born with a sin, after you realize that, ah, I'm the one who cannot help but can only commit sin, after you have come to that, uh, that realization, you acknowledge and also you accept in your heart that you are evil continually, that you are the person who is dirty, and you don't have anything good in you. When you reach that point, then verse 7 talks about the blood. Then the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ wash you from all unrighteousness. Then chapter 1 of 1 John talks about how we receive salvation. How each and every one of us is able to receive salvation. So we should be checking ourselves. Are we the one who have received salvation according to 1 John chapter 1? Chapter 1? And if according to 1 John chapter 1, are we only in verses 9? Have we already also gone to verses 7? So that we should be checking our salvation. How can we confirm our salvation? How can we check our salvation? We can only check our salvation through the book of 1 John. We can only check our salvation through the Bible, through the word of God. That is how Abraham received salvation. 
there is how Noah received salvation. There is how various people in the Bible receive salvation. How did they receive salvation? How are they saved? How did they become righteous? How did they become holy? How did they become perfect? That is the most important thing. And all these things, they are being explained in the book of First John. Then now when we come to Second to First John chapter 2, the Bible says like this, My little children, my little children. Then the Bible says, These things write I unto you that to sin not. Then in this part, there's something that does not please God. God is not when his children commit sin. God is not happy when his children are committing sin. God does not want us to commit sin. But also God knows that uh, we are human beings. We are formed out of the dust of the ground. Where the people does not have anything good in us. Where the people are weak and wicked. Where the people can easily fall. Then he say like this, my little Children. So, yes, he doesn't want us to commit sin. Then what can keep us? When the thankfulness, when we have the thankful heart, when the thankful heart is full in us, naturally, we will be following the heart of God and also we will be having the relationship with God. When the thankfulness is bigger in our heart, our heart will connect with the heart of God. And the power of God will come to us. And the heart of God will come to us. And when we are having a relationship with God, God will guide us. And God himself will not let us commit sin. Jesus said to the woman who was caught committing adultery, and Jesus Christ said to her, go, go and sin no more. What is the meaning of go and sin no more? Which means that I will not, I will, I will keep you not to sin. Then also, let's think about this woman. When this woman left this place, this woman left with what type of heart? What type of heart was she having? Heart which was full of thankfulness. She was really thankful in the heart. Ah, I'm the one who was going to be stoned. I'm the one who was going to be destroyed. The time that she was coming back, the time that she was housed, she could enter the house praising God. I never knew that. I will come back to my house. I never knew that I will turn back to my bed. I never knew that I will be seeing my children and my husband once again. That time she could be having thankful heart. With this thankful heart that she had, she could have the heart which was connected with the heart of God, not the heart which was connected with the flesh. And when the heart was connected with God, then during that time, this thankfulness in the heart could keep her. So in this part, when thankful is full in our heart, it's very natural to follow and to serve Jesus Christ. Who is serving God? Who is serving the Lord? Ah, the one who has got a thankful heart. Everyone, let's think where God brought us from. Let us think about our salvation. Let us think where God has brought us out of. Where God has brought us from. Out of what did he bring you out when we think deeply about this part, then we can only have thankful heart. But when people lose their thankfulness, when people don't have thankful heart, then people are falling in sin. Then also say like this, my little children. No, my little children. In this part, God is calling them children. Meaning what? In the book of First John chapter 1, there's no word children. But now in this part, we can find the word children. Why God is calling them children? Because in the book of 1 John chapter 1, there are the people who have already been washed by what? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Then they are now children of God. They have received the power of becoming children of God. And now in this first one, say like this, if any of the child sin, if any man sin after becoming the child of God, what is there? In verse 1, the Bible says like this, we have an advocate with the Father. That if the, the, the late children of God sin, God establish an advocate. And this advocate, it is with the Father. But the problem is, many people, after sinning, they are going back to verses 9. No. 
God does not want you to go back to verses 9. God does not want you to go back to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. No. God wants you to establish an advocate in your heart. God wants you to establish him inside your heart. So the time that you have seen, do not go back to 1 John chapter 1, verses 9, but you should establish the advocate in your heart. I have my advocate. Ah, my advocate is with the Father. The time that you establish advocate in your heart, then during that time, what will remain in you? Thankfulness. You will continue having thankful heart. You will continue having this heart. Although yes, I've sinned. Although yes, Satan might condemn me. But what I know is this. I'm righteous. I'm holy. Because God, Jesus Christ, died for me. And Jesus Christ is our advocate. And also sitting together with the Father. So everyone, I'm really thankful because God is always guiding us. And also God is always giving us his word. So as much as God is guiding us and also God is giving us his word, we always see the revelation of God. Today, we realize we are already children. We should live with thankfulness and also we have an advocate. So I'm really thankful for this time that God has given unto us. Until next time, God bless you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify your name. Thank you for this time that you have given unto us. Thank you, Lord, because of this word. Thank you, Father, because you have an advocate where the people are weak and wicked. But, Lord, thank you because you made us the children. We became children with a thankful heart, with an advocate. We always have a relationship with you. And, Lord, you guide us according to our will and us according to our plan. Lord, thank you for each and everything as we glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen.